fellow legends. Aurora's been out for well over a week now, and she's already hitting a massive win rate with Rito issuing some well-deserved nerfs. And yet, even though people are currently stomping, we still think almost everyone is playing Aurora completely wrong, and she's even more broken than people think. So in this video, we're going to explain how to round her runes, items, and abilities into a single cohesive playstyle to unleash her full potential. So let's get started. Aurora's passive is essentially like Lilia's passive and Akshan's passive had a baby. Every third auto, you deal bonus max health damage that scales with your AP, and proccing it on a champion gives you move speed and healing. The move speed she gets from a passive and build is her most valuable stat, and that's because her entire kit is designed around repositioning. And because you don't have three damage spells, your Q is absolutely loaded. But the problem is, most of it is on the recast. The pullback has a higher base damage and a better AP scaling, and its damage increases based on the target's missing health. But more importantly, it can also hit a champion multiple times. So to hit the most amount of damage onto a priority target, you want to pull the highest number of projectiles through them, which means repositioning so they're the closest target to you. Obviously, these kinds of moves can put you at some serious risk, and you might think your W is the ideal spell to help you deal with that, dodging spells and avoiding any follow-up from the enemy. But in reality, most of the survivability you're going to get is not going to come from across the veil, and here's why. Your W is actually super slow, which makes it very impractical for dodging skill shots reliably. And if you combine that with its reset on takedown, it looks like it's been designed more as a strong repositioning tool instead. It's also really good for dashing over walls, which makes it a strong roaming tool too. And because the enemy sees the portal you jump through, you can use it to bamboozle people about where you've actually gone or fake a dash over a wall. Your E is also in the same boat. Dash itself is slow and kind of delayed, which makes it difficult to dodge spells with. But because it has slightly more damage than a single part of your Q, and you can use it to animation cancel both your Q's initial cast and auto attacks, it's ideal for high DPS combos. Speaking of which, your bread and butter combo will be a Q, auto E, and a recasted Q. You'll want to be relatively close range to get the max value out of your Q anyway, which makes the disengage dash on your E all the more important, and the auto is in there to pop your passive on the priority target, which your animation cancelling already so you're not wasting any precious seconds. The second part of your Q also doesn't have a range on it, so you can run away before recasting, and using your E before increases its damage thanks to the missing health scaling. This is essentially your normal trading combo for laning or skirmishing, but it's also incredibly effective at wave clear. Once you get yourself either a lost chapter or a hextech alternator, the QEQ2 combo will generally one-shot the wave, allowing you to scurry back to safety or to roam to a side lane. And in case it wasn't abundantly obvious already, Aurora is a very ultra-reliant champion. She's not desperately useless without it, but her entire kit is empowered by the way it works. Repositioning to get onto backline targets with your recast is much easier, your W's all the more bamboozling when you jump into the walls, and your E's mobility becomes a dash when it's used in the same context. Its utility and abundant damage is also pretty self-explanatory, but what most people don't know about is how deceptively large the dash on it is, which easily allows you to dive every lane and flank over almost every wall on Summoner's Rift, which leaves us with two distinct playstyles. Because you are so short-range compared with other mages, mid lane Aurora is almost never in the driving seat when it comes to trading, which is why Electrocute has such a high win rate mid lane, because it's the best burst option for return fire. But it also has a high win rate because it gets you access to Ultimate Hunter. Because lane bullying isn't generally going to be your path to victory, and she is so ultimate reliant, it's better to just roll all the qualities she has into a push and move playstyle. Once she's made it to Lost Chapter, her wave clear is good enough to ignore lane, she has enough terrain vaulting abilities to roam quickly, and enough gank set up with her ultimate to roam effectively. Which is why Challenger Aurora's take Malignant's first item. Not only does this get you even more ultimate haste to let you roam more often, it also gives you the mana you need to spam spells and outpush your opponent, and the pull it drops is really hard to avoid in her ultimate. You can then follow that up with a cosmic drive for the move speed passive, and Zonya's for surviving the late game upfront damage, which is now where we split off into the second playstyle. The reason you build those items is mostly because you're restricted by being outranged, but they're not actually the optimal choices for her kit in general. Probably the most overlooked thing about her is that Twofold Hex has two parts to it, which makes it incredibly efficient at procking and reprocking spell-based items like Lich Bane, Leandries, and Cosmic Drive, which is by far her best build top lane. But because she doesn't get outranged as often, you also need to have a completely different playstyle. You don't want to roam as much since you are now the lane bully, and the biggest lead you can get is from abusing your range advantage, which is also a lot easier than pushing and roaming. This is exactly why Fleet Footwork has the highest win rate top lane, because you're looking to space and kite your opponent in lane as you bully them, rather than squeeze in as much damage as you're allowed to. So instead of spamming abilities to wave clear, you want to use your Q and autos to poke down the enemy and force them out of lane or away from the wave. Lich Bane is probably the most stat efficient item she can buy, especially considering how well she spell weaves the sheen damage, which is why it has a considerably higher win rate than any other first item. But what to follow that 
that up with has a much more nuanced answer. Technically, Cosmic Drive is her best second item, since the move speed passive works so flawlessly into her playstyle, but using move speed effectively is generally more difficult and kind of a skill in and of itself. Conversely, because its damage is just slapped on top of your existing damage, it's almost impossible to mess up Leandri's, which is why it has a better win rate as a second item, not because it's categorically the better item, but because it's just simpler to make use of. Either way, you'll want to build both of them, but the order you choose to build them in will generally come down to how comfortable you are on the champion at the time. The only other thing to reiterate is spell procced items inherently slow down your play because they have cooldowns and time restrictions. And summarizing the playstyle in as few words as possible is to just weave and space to accommodate that. Your Q cooldown starts after the first cast, so you're not punished for holding on to the recast, which means you can easily get two Sheen or Cosmic procs off every Q, and you can reapply Leandri's burn at near perfect intervals. And that's pretty much it. So until next time, good luck and have fun.